Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at getting started with React.js. Let's get started. So today I'm going to go to my desktop and we're going to create up a quick uh, single page React application. Now we're going to use this using MPX um, and it is create React app and I'm going to call this my app. Now, when I run this, it's going to go on and create things up. You may need to follow some uh, instructions to install it for the first time. You may to actually need to use the MPX dash dash force and then create React app, my app, to force it to go on and install because to deal with some of the dependency issues, et cetera, because some of this hasn't been updated in a while. but. Everything should be working correctly. And again, as you can see here, it's going and it is creating up an app. Okay, so technically what's going on here is we're creating up a basic template for us to um, have our application. Now, it's going to install a bunch of different applications for us. So if we do CD, my app, and again, you can actually see right here, it's telling us what to do. And then we can do just following the directions, npm start. It will go on and open up a web page for us. And I need to bring it over for you guys. And bringing it over, you would see this um, nice React app. And here you can, it tells us, it gives us some information, edit src forward slash app.js and save to reload. So we can go through and you can even click on here to get some new React stuff, but I'm gonna go on and go in and open up a that file. So I'll go CD desktop, my app, and I'm going to go on and open this all up inside of uh, VS Code. And we can see here that it created up a lot of information. Now it has our node modules, and if I click on here, it has a ton of modules that it installed for us. And again, this is to help us build up this basic application. It has a lot of pre-made stuff public. You can see it already filled in a lot of information for us, but the big thing and important thing is our SRC, and we can also look at our packages.json. Notice here it put in a lot of dependencies for us. It put in a lot of scripts, pre for us, it put in lint. Uh, browser lists, development stuff as well for us. Now we are going to the SRC and we're looking here, notice it is app.js. So that is what we're going to do. And you can see here all of this code created up this that is running right now. Okay, and it's allowing us to take a look and be able to see what we can create. Now for today, we're going to just do some basics of learning React, as I said. So we're gonna go on and delete everything here. Oops. All right, and now once we've deleted everything, we're going to go on and uh, do this quick discussion about React itself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at quite a bit of the main React concepts that you're going to be learning and using for the rest of the course. So the first thing we want to learn is how to create and nest components. So React apps are made out of components. And so these are basically pieces of UI or user interface that has its own logic and appearance. And a component can be like something so small, such as a button, which we'll, we'll create here in just a second, or it could be also as big as an entire web page. So let's go on and create up a function here, and we're going to just name this uh, new button. And all it's going to take is going to return out a button, and we'll just call this uh, click me. Okay, and I'll close this out so we can see a little bit better and I'll zoom in a little bit for you. Now, this is the first part that we have here. And what this does, this returns a markup. 
Okay, so if we want to have it return other items, we need to be able to put them into a new function. Now, the next thing that we want to do is to put it inside of a component. So we're going to export default function, and I'm going to go on and call this just my app for lack of a better term. And we're going to have it return in here and h1 tag and it'll just say something like my first web app with react and the next thing that we want to do is to go on and inside of brackets put in our new button okay and we'll exit out of that tag okay so now we've noticed here that our new button begins and ends with a new uh, with, with a capital letter here. Now that's how you know that it's a React component. React component names must always start with a capital letter, while HTML tags must start with a lowercase letter. So now let's take a look at kind of our full result here. So let me zoom out a little bit and let me save. And let's take a look and see what exactly it's not liking here. Oh, and so notice here, this is this is kind of my own common mistake here. I forget to wrap it up in a JSX fragment here. So actually, if I if I paste this and I notice here, I can click this and it says wrap in a JSX fragment. I can click it and it wraps everything for me, but it kind of reformats it in a way that's not to my liking. So I will put this down like this. And notice here is a JSX X fragment. Now, sometimes you will see people use div. So using div tags in there and that that's fine as well. But you can also put it in with a JSX tag. And now if I save this and we scroll over, notice now my first web app with React. And again, we can have this click me file here and it Again, this is this this doesn't it actually isn't doing anything, but at least we have done this. Now, what else is going on with this? So we have two other different things here. We have export default. Now these are keywords uh, that specify the main component in the file. So again, we've we've talked about utilizing these types of things with uh, JavaScript syntax before. So now let's go on and talk about. Uh, writing um, markup with JSX. So as we had kind of seen before, we can use div here, okay? Or we don't have to, and we can just use this JSX syntax, okay? Now, markup syntax uh, that we've seen uh, here is called JSX. Again, some of this is also JSX. Now it's optional, but most React projects use JSX because it's very convenient and it allows us to use different types of developer local development tools as well. So JSX is actually stricter than HTML. So you must, uh, you have to close tags. So for here, for example, like this, okay? And if you wanted to maybe put in a break. So if I wanted to put in a break here, I would actually have to put that in so that we could see here, we would put in our break and it moves here, but we actually have to have that closing bracket. If I, if I have this, it starts to get fussy and notice here we get an error for a compiling error. So it is much more strict than HTML was in the past. So now if you've had projects in the past where you have HTML and you want to move them forward to JSX, you can do that with converters that are online. A lot of them work pretty well. But again, I'll let you guys go through and, and look at that yourselves. Now, we can also add in CSS styling, okay, that we can specify our classes. So maybe we have a class name. We can put in the same way that we would with a HTML class attribute. And again, we can go on an inside of our CSS files, and our CSS files are uh, over here, so we have app CSS, for example. There's a lot of stuff that was already pre-made for us, um, but we can do that as well. So maybe we want to put in a 
Um, maybe we want to change this up. So instead of having just, for example, this um, my first web app here, let's go on and I'm going to actually delete all of this. And we're going to create up a profile for a user. So doing that, we can also display data and we can go on and have a little bit of fun with um, just some extra information that we want to. OK, so let's do something like uh, const user is equal to. And again, here, I'll just put in uh, my name, Markham Reed. And I'm going to grab an image URL and we'll, we'll grab it here in a second. And we also grab in and let's make an image size is equal to 90. And I think we will be good for now on the image size. And the next thing we want here is to actually create up a profile. So let's go on and do that. So let's do export default function here. And we're just going to call this profile since we're creating up a profile document. And we need to put this inside of our JSX tags. Let's put an H1 tag here. And this will be from the user dot name. So it'll put my name up there. Then we want an SRC. Oh, whoops, not here. We want to actually create up our image. Okay. And inside of this image, we need we need a couple things here. We need a class name here, and that's going to be avatar. We want an SRC here, and this is going to be the user dot image URL. Uh, I did URL. Okay, and then we'll have some alt text to the photo. Okay, and we'll do something like a photo of plus user dot name. And then let's give it some style here. And we'll do width is equal is uh, what? Oh, whoops. No wonder this is fussing up here, too. There we go. Uh, width here will be user dot image size. And our height here will be user dot image size as well. And everything here should be OK. If I go over here and refresh, oh, it did not like something. So let's let's take a look here. Let's zoom out just a little bit and make sure that we have everything working that we would want here. Oh, and if we notice here, I did not wrap this whole piece here in our return. And now we go over and notice Markham. And again, here it has a blank uh, picture. OK, so let me go on and uh, go here and let me grab a picture really quickly. All right, so I grabbed a little picture here. And now we should be able to go over here and take a look. Oh, maybe it doesn't like that particular picture. So let me go and grab a different one. All right, I've pasted in a new picture. We can go over there and notice now we have a little picture of a snail. Now, the last thing I kind of wanted to go over with this particular uh, section of the video is to also add in that um, some some CSS, okay? So notice here that we have this class name here as avatar. So let's go over to our app, app CSS, and we're going to go on and add in here a dot avatar, and it'll be 
border minus radius here is going to be uh, 50%. So, and we'll see here, once I save this, that it should go through and add in our, huh. let's take a look here and see what we want to do with it. Okay, so now let's take a look at why this isn't actually working over here. So notice what I wanted to do with our CSS to make this nice and round. Now I had gone in initially to the app.css and actually this is incorrect. We need to cut this, close this, and let's go over to our index.css and just paste that in. And if we go over to the side here, notice now it is nice and rounded and it looks like a proper uh, little informational session. Now we can also go over and we could potentially add in extra information. Maybe, for example, you had inside of here you wanted to put in, we also had like a, uh, some description. Okay. Uh, professor at uh, USF. Okay. And we can, uh, maybe you want to put in that information, let's say down here in a p tag and it'd be user dot description. And notice now, whoops, we need to put this inside of our brackets. And now it's professor at USF. So you could actually start putting in descriptions and everything else in there and it would look nice and tidy. And again, you could also work on spacing and styling and other types of stuff as well. Um, and maybe part of that is from uh, the CSS that we have here. So maybe we want to do something like this and see if that changes how things look for us. And notice it gives us a little bit more space, but not much. And we don't need to worry about it too much there, but it's just something nice that we uh, get to kind of play with. Now, in the next video, I'll probably start talking about conditional rendering and, and we'll finish up this quick tutorial on React.js. Again, if you like this content and you want more of it, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.